This is a handmade wooden camera jib that I built over eight years ago. It's essentially a crane that's designed to do very high to very low smooth camera movements. We actually use this quite a bit on our Face of the Enemy and Complete Control music videos back in the day. Why am I showing you this? To prove that if you want to create a music video for your band, you don't need to invest in thousands of dollars of equipment or hire out a big budget company. You can do it yourself, and today I'm going to show you how. Hey, Elds, Minions, Immortals, this is Fang from Lords of the Trident. It's fair to say that I've made quite a few music videos in my day. And although I've had some help, a large majority of them were shot and edited by yours truly. Now, understandably, a lot of the technical side of creating music videos can be incredibly daunting to first time filmmakers. So, over the course of the next couple videos, I'm going to attempt to break this down in an easy to understand fashion. Without further ado, so you want to DIY a music video, part one, the camera. This is a camera. <laughs> Yes, I, I know, I know, I'm, I'm such a good teacher. But what kind of camera do you need for a music video? Well, most people would think you'd need a video camera or camcorder, but that's usually not the best choice, especially for those on a budget. Yes, there are $100 camcorders you can purchase on Amazon, but we're specifically looking for a camera where you can change out the lens, and I'll explain why in a bit. Typically, that leaves us with the choice of a DSLR camera, that is to say, a camera for taking photos that also has video functionality. The two biggest brands in this field are Canon and Nikon. I use Canon, but on a surface level, there's not really a lot of difference. The main thing you're looking for is, can this camera swap lenses and shoot at least 1080p video at 24 frames a second? But wait, aren't those cameras expensive? Not necessarily. Well, getting the latest and greatest camera with 8K functionality will make a difference in your image, you can still get some absolutely amazing shots with much older cameras. Up until recently, a lot of our videos were shot on models like the Canon Rebel T4i, which cost around $350 to $400, and much less if you buy a used one. Uh, by the way, I'm sure there's a Nikon equivalent to these cameras, but I'm only going to recommend cameras that I've actually used in the past, so that's all Canon. Currently, I own a Canon Rebel T6i, and there's a 4K EOS M50 kit with a tripod and lenses and attachments and all sorts of extra bells and whistles for like 750 bucks on Amazon, I'll put a link down below. The reason we're looking for a 1080p or better camera is obvious. 1080p HD is sort of the bare minimum of what's acceptable nowadays in terms of video quality, and we don't want to go any lower than that. But why are we looking for 24 frames a second when you can get cameras that shoot much faster, like 30 or even 60 frames a second? Because a million years ago, 24 frames a second was the speed that was either the technical limitation of movies in the theater or decided upon as the default by movie studios and is actually still the default cinema frame rate today. 30 and 60 frames a second technically give you much smoother video quality, but our minds associate 24 frames a second with cinematic and high budget. So for that reason, we always want to shoot in 24. The reason we want a camera that can swap out lenses is because the quality of your image is controlled by three things. The camera, the lens, and the lighting. If we're stuck with a very basic lens that we can't fully control, we're ultimately limiting ourselves to one type of shot. Sure, your cell phone camera might be great and shoot in 4K, but you can't typically get those close-up, half-blurred, out-of-focus shots that physical lenses can produce. A good quality lens can make a gigantic difference even on the oldest, most low-budget camera out there, so the ability to swap in different lenses is an absolute must. One more small but very important thing to remember, different cameras have different lens mounts, so make sure that the lens you're about to buy actually fits your camera. Lens terminology can also be very confusing. What's with all the millimeter numbers on there. How about this F 1.5 number? What does that mean? Well, without going in too deep, typically the lower the millimeter number on the lens, the wider the shot. So if you kept the camera in one place, a 12 millimeter lens might capture your entire band, while a 50 millimeter lens might zoom in on only the singer. The F number is called an F stop. 
and that number is associated with aperture or how wide the lens can open up. The lower the F number on a lens, the more light it can take in. This is the same with our eyes. If we're in a dark room, our pupils open up wide so we can take in more light and see better in the dark. Lenses with low F numbers, ones that can open really wide, will perform better in lower lighting. But more importantly for us, the lower the F number, the more you can blow things out of focus in the background and create that cool cinematic look for your videos. Okay, okay, I see people in the back nodding off, so let's get to the point. What's the least amount of money I can spend while still getting good quality? Well, here's some suggestions for lower tier equipment that can still do an amazing job. At the lowest tier, I'd recommend picking up something like a used Canon T5i. You can find these on eBay with the stock lens for about 350. The stock lens is okay, but not super good. So I'd recommend picking up two additional lenses. The first one is a must, the Canon 50 millimeter or Nifty 50. It's a hundred bucks, but can produce some absolutely incredible images way above its price range. I'd also recommend picking up the Canon 24 millimeter FS lens. This is a very small, it lens for about 110 bucks, and it's really good for wider shots. In fact, I used to shoot all of the Words of Fang videos with this lens. You can use the 50 millimeter for those close up, cool camera blur shots, and the 24 millimeter for the wider frame, full band shots. With tax, you're looking at around 600 bucks for everything. Of course, you're gonna also probably wanna pick up like a cheapo $30 tripod, a few extra batteries, on a memory card, so probably closer to $700. For the next step up, you could keep the same camera, but upgrade one of the lenses. Uh, Rocketon makes these amazing cinematic lenses that for our purposes are roughly the same as some thousand dollar lenses, but for a fraction of the price. I'd recommend upgrading the 24 millimeter pancake lens to either a 24 millimeter or a 35 millimeter cinema lens. Both of these options go for around $400, which brings your total cost up to about $1,000. For another 250 bucks or so, you could also upgrade your camera to a Canon EOS M50, which is a much newer model that has way more options and can shoot in 4K. That would bring our total cost to around $1,250. But Fang, I wanna make videos that look exactly like your videos. What do you use? Well, okay, feel free to skip this part, but if you're curious, like I said earlier in the video, I used to shoot on a Canon T6i, but in the beginning of 2020, I saved up a bunch of money to upgrade my rig. My current main camera is the Blackmagic 4K Pocket Cinema Camera, which costs around $1,300, and I absolutely adore it. However, all of the lenses I had from before are Canon lenses, and this camera has a different mount. So I had to purchase a special adapter called a Speed Booster for around 850 bucks. Seems expensive for an adapter, but it actually allows me to let in more light into the camera so my f-stop numbers are lower. To protect my camera and add some mounting points, I bought a small rig cage with a handle and some other adapters for around 200 bucks. Since this camera shoots in raw format, I also needed a one terabyte external hard drive for $200. If you're keeping score, we're currently at $2,500 and I haven't even talked about lenses yet. The three lenses I use on this rig are my Rocketon 35 millimeter, a Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter for wide shots, and my favorite lens, the one I'm using right now, the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter. I also have an external 4K shot monitor, some extra batteries, cables, some microphones, tripods, and a motorized gimbal. All in all, my entire setup came to around six grand. And the crazy thing is, most people would easily classify this as lower mid-tier equipment. In the world of cameras and lenses, six grand is really not a whole lot of money. If you wanna film a good video as cheap as you can, I would not recommend jumping immediately into mid-tier equipment. Uh, start with cheaper stuff, see if you enjoy the process, and then you can upgrade to more expensive equipment in the future. Okay, so you've got your camera and a lens or two, so now you're ready to start shooting, right? Well. Yeah, actually. But first, one more important thing. Find the autofocus switch on your lens, turn it to manual, and never touch it again. You're shooting video, not photos. And if I see a camera autofocus in a music video, it's game over. You need to manually focus before each shot, full stop. In the next video, we're gonna talk through music video concepts, and I'll explain things like ISO, exposure, lighting, and shutter speeds. But for now, I've got an assignment for you. 
Try putting your camera settings on auto exposure, usually the green A option, and just go shoot some video. See how it feels to do different shots, focus the lens, etc. A lot of how I learned was trial and error, so don't be afraid to go fill up a memory card with some test shots. Also, if you want to see parts two and three right now, right this second, they're going to be up on our Patreon for anybody pledging any amount. So if this video or if any of our videos helped you conquer your scene, please consider joining the most metal Patreon on the planet at patreon.com slash lords of the trident. Amazing prizes, free music, and early access awaits the worthy. Stay metal, we'll see you next time.